630, we'll call the meeting to order and uh, we'll first have the pledge and then we'll sign it. Mr. Israel, thanks. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome everybody here tonight. We'll start with our consent items. Uh, we have the minutes of the March 14, 2016 regular board meeting. The minutes of the April 7, 2016 study session. Uh, certification of the April 7, 2016 executive session. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I second that. Okay. Push by Sandy and second by Steve. Any other questions? All in favor? Okay. Hey, Mr. Carries five zero. And we'll move on the financial report. Well, in your packets are the um, financial reports. Um, the beginning balance for the general fund was $520,415.54 with receipts of $967,363.61. Month to date expenses were $911,632.19, which leaves an ending balance of $576,146.96. Debt service fund started with $1,363,748.97. There were $9,391.62 worth of receipts, no expenses, leaving an ending balance of $1,373,000, or $1,373,140.59. Capital projects fund started with $741,311.67, with receipts of $5,138.25. Expenses were $181,089.78 with an ending balance of $565,360.14. Transportation funds started with $845,110.89. Receipts were $2,379.42. No expenses, or oh, sorry, there were expenses. It's like the bus replacement. Um, month to date expenses were $38,581.65, leaving an ending balance of $808,908.66. Last but not least is the bus replacement fund that started with $231,361.06. Receipts were $618.70. No expenses, leaving an ending balance of $231,979.76. Would you like a summary of the funds, or is that number seven that we can discuss that? I think what you gave us, or maybe else, like more information. Okay. Are, are you comfortable where we're at? I am. I am. Um, the biggest one that had a change was the capital projects funds. As far as expenses so far this year, we have that Apple payment. Um, it's twice a year in April and October, so that was the April payment that some of it uh, came out of the CPI. Okay. So that was expected. Everything else is going pretty smoothly. Or do you have any concerns or red flags? Not at this time. Um, three payrolls in April, so that'll be a cash um, item to, you know, just to watch out for, um, that, and that'll be very discussed for for next month's board meeting as well to recap that. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Welcome. Anybody have any questions? No. Any motion to approve the financial? I move to approve the financial report as read. Okay, motion by Steve. I'll second. And second by Lisa. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right hand. Mm -hmm. Motion carried 5 0. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to student stakeholder focus. Uh, donations. 
Trinity Lease First Robotics, $100 for batteries. Booster Club Softball Uniforms, $3,864. Fulton County Solid Waste, FFA Volunteering Services, $75. Jennifer Kingery Overmeyer Memorial Fund, Rochester Community School Corporation Libraries, $363. B and K, the 2016 RMS Talent Show participant, drink tokens. Jennifer Kingry Overmeyer Memorial Fund, Riddle Library, $363. Indiana Community Foundation, RTC Fund, Prom Photo Booth, $200. <clears throat> and uh, Hope Shally, RHS Choir, $50. Are there any others? Are there any questions? Column number seven should be Northern Indiana Community Foundation, not just the Indiana Community Foundation. Okay. That correction? I think it did. We have a motion to approve the donations. I move we accept the donations as listed. Okay, motion by Lisa. I'll second it. And second by Sandy. Hey, your discussion. All in favor, right in. Okay, motion carried, 5 0. Okay. Moving on to the uh, overnight field trip. Up here. I think that's going to be next month, right? Mm -hmm. um, we did. There was discussion today around the trip to Costa Rica and the concern around the Zika virus. And so I spoke with both. Uh, I spoke with Adam Strauss, who, who uh, communicated with Mrs. Zartman. And um, we have agreed at this time it will not change their their deadlines or um, the ability to plan and, and to help students plan if we so desire to continue on with that field trip. But at this point in time, we're going to um, kind of monitor that situation, seek some information from the State Department in regard to travel advisories, those types of things, and then try to bring some information back to the board next month as, as to what they're suggesting to us and where that is at that point in time. Um, within the next few months, we will have to make those decisions, but we have some time now to do some more research around that. So I would recommend that we table that as we gather more information around that concern and make sure we're bringing accurate information. <coughs> Okay, we will uh, table that till the next meeting until we gather more information. And Mr. Strasser apologized for not being able to be here this evening. He's helping cover some athletic events that are going on this evening. So otherwise, he would have been here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, policy and procedures. As I think we, everybody knows now, twice a year we get packets from Neola about changes to our policy that, needed to be, that need to be made. Um, we also were fortunate enough to get a special packet this year that, um, of things that need to be done by June 1st. So the first one that needs to be done by June 1st is a gang policy, which um, is number 5840. And Neola is um, suggesting at this point that we delete everything that we had and just start over. And so they have a 23 page uh, working document for us. And before we can do that um, and put it completely into practice, uh, Mrs. Vance has to meet with a fairly large group from the community, law enforcement and the court system and several people. And I think she has that date set for April 26th. So, um, that will get done before our next meeting and will we can we get it up online for everyone to see everyone to see okay um, Ted how much of this do I have to read to consider this the first reading the title oh, well, say those 23 pages <laughs> yeah or you can listen to me read 20, 23 pages well worth having Ted here <laughs> yes exactly I would agree if I can find it Criminal gangs and criminal gang activity, I believe, is what they're going to retitle it. Um, 
Sometimes they give us optional pages or optional numbers throughout it. Are there, is it other options <coughs> or, or sort of take it as they wrote? Well, there are options, and we worked on some of those in our work session. Okay. Um, there are options. So we'll get those up online so people can see um, what we're doing. We've got our working copy here. Um, but nothing is written in stone until we right, have, those we have options are one of those things mm -hmm. that we will be considering at that April 26 mm -hmm. meeting. I think Oscar is part of that meeting, and then there's a larger community group that will meet, and it's those specific options that we need to make sure are consistent within our district and what we're doing, but also is something that the community can support as well, because this is really um, a community initiative that we've all got to wrap our heads around. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think that that's all we have. All right. So, um, if there are no objections from the board, you'll just go ahead and assign it to second reading and possibly third reading at the next meeting. Okay. Because if you don't get it done at the next meeting, you have to have another meeting before June 1st because okay. state law requires the adoption of the policy. So, we will schedule second, third reading then for our next meeting on the completion. All right. Thank you. Approval of school handbooks. At this time, we were really focusing on the elementary handbooks. Uh, <coughs> we still do hard copies for those kiddos at the elementary, and if we can get that submitted by a specific deadline, we get reduced costs per booklet, so we're really trying to make that deadline and save some of those costs. So I'm going to turn it over to Jason. I know he worked uh, with Riddle to, to align those, and Jason, if you would please just point out those proposed sure. changes to that handbook. And yeah, our our handbook is about as long as that reading that we can already do, um, but I've only got like, three pages of changes, and, and there's only certain small parts of it, so I don't think this will take too long. Um, on page seven and eight of the handbooks, do you guys have copies of those? I don't know if they were sent to you. Yeah, um, if you go, I'm sorry, Jason. If you were, we're going completely board docs this time, so I think we're all feeling a bit. Uh, uh, naked, if you will, without all of our papers in front of us, but if everybody would just, on your agenda on the left-hand side, if you see the approval of school handbooks, and you double-click on that, then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will see an additional link, and if you click on that, you should have access to those that Jason will be covering. Okay, this is the new version? He, he will be walking through those proposed changes. There's, there's two types of changes. Uh, that you'll either see something highlighted in blue or highlighted in yellow. Blue means that uh, we would like to delete that. Uh, the first deletion is on page 7, and it follow, goes on to page 8. Uh, college and military visits for the elementary schools. I believe this, this piece was put in there, um, but it talks about juniors and seniors. Um, and I don't know how it made it in there, but it's, it's in there. So. Um, we're going to pull that. The health, health room visits will count hour for hour. Uh, again, something that's not necessarily needed in our schools. And, uh, and then number 11, uh, parents may not excuse students for time missed. It does not fall under Indiana Compulsory Attendance Code. Those are the three omissions we'd like to, to have removed. Have we got any questions on those three things? Uh, none, none of these have any impact on our day-to-day -day operations or anything like that. None of the none of the changes that we have will drastically affect anything. Most of it's just informational. Uh, so Jason trying to align what's in writing to building practices absolutely. at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking through, trying to find things that either don't apply or add things that didn't need to be. So. Would you go over those three things yes. really quickly for me? Absolutely. Okay. Um, it's college and military visits, no more than one per semester for juniors and two per semester for seniors. No visits during the month of May. Um, health room visits will count hour for hour. And uh, parents may not excuse students for time missed that does not fall under Indiana compulsory attendance code. Okay, thank you. Yes. And then on page 26, uh, we, we tried to get with all the all the departments that have areas in here and on page 26 we we added uh, 
made a change to the to the website that we use for our uh, our um, school lunch accounts. So you'll see that highlighted there. And then uh, there was an addition of persons eating with students must have the correct money. As parents cannot use student accounts to eat lunch, and that's that's directly from the cafeteria staff. And then our only other changes that, that we'd like, uh, like to have is on page 27, um, under bus policies, permanent changes must be on a bus form and require 24-hour notice. And that's to give the, the bus drivers and, and transportation time to develop. If it's a one-time bus change, that's, that's something we can do if we get in the morning. The permanent ones require a little bit of time for communication with bus drivers and checking routes and things like that. And then on page 28, um, there was a passage added by the Transportation Department, uh, basically giving a little bit of guidance if there is a bus issue, uh, kind of the chain of command, who to contact first. Uh, if that's not, if the issue's not resolved, you know, a second attempt at, at this and then the third attempt, uh, kind of to help, help parents know when, when they do have issues uh, how to best resolve that uh, in the quickest quickest manner. So th those are the only changes that we have uh, for next year. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Anybody have questions? No problem. Any comments to look through anymore? <laughs> I will entertain a motion to uh, approve the handbooks. And these would be for both elementaries, for Columbia Correct. and for Riddle. Yeah. And then next month, we would focus on the secondary. Those are online, so we don't have that deadline to meet and allows us a little more time um, with, with some of those critical areas to make sure that we have those corrected. So right now, the focus is, is on elementary and to meet that deadline to reduce the cost. Okay. <clears throat> So the motion will be for the Riddle and Columbia school handbooks. I move that we accept the changes in the Columbia and Riddle handbooks as Jason laid out for us. Okay, motion by Lisa. I second that. Second by Steve. Any other questions? All in favor? Motion carried by zero. Thank you, Jason, Thanks, for your Jason. work on that. Okay, moving right along. Personnel report. Yeah. Forgive us, we're still oh. going through the new. We missed something there. Yeah. Okay. We need to go back to the Alice. Hold oh, Alice, okay. All right. Okay. Alice, train the trainer model. Okay. Yeah. And we have spoken about this as um, a board collectively and had a presentation by Oscar and, and by uh, our school resource officer, Skeeter Doherty. And Oscar <coughs> is going to try to share mo more openly to the public what we've been talking about. And then I'll make a few recommendations and share where we are with, with the community. But if you'd like to share a little bit about yeah, the um, Currently, right now, at Rochester Community School Corporation, we are a lockdown school. And as I've told the board, that term comes from out in California in the 80s when they're having drive-by shootings. You'd lock down, so everybody dropped to the floor, so then the bullets would hit them, they'd cower in the corner. Where if we call a lockdown now, that's what we have our kindergartners through 12th graders trained to do. Go over in this corner, because it's the farthest, or that corner, because it's the farthest away from windows, and wait for somebody to come in and maybe do some sort of damage, heaven forbid. Um, ALICE stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. Um, the big thing is communication through Alice. You come over the loudspeaker or however you can communicate, whether that's an administrator or a secretary having to go through the hallways to tell people <coughs> what's going on, so people can get as far away from the danger as possible. So it'll involve retraining staff, retraining our students, uh, retraining our administrative staff um, from the way that we currently do it. And so that is what Skeeter and I have been working on probably for a year and a half, almost two years. Uh, we finally have the uh, grant funds set up. We're going to have a trainer from Alice come to us. 
Uh, we are looking at a minimum of four to five school employees per building, including administrators. So that gets us to 20 to 25 people. That leaves us some slots open. I know we had a scare at the courthouse here. Um, and as the school corporation, I know we like to work with the community. So the individuals at the courthouse are interested in this training. Um, that could help recoup a little bit of funds for us working with them. McConquaw School Corporation is also um, interested in being part of the training. And then we have uh, the local police departments. I believe even the fire department may be um, going to send some representatives to go through the train as well. It will be in June. Um, I know we've spent a lot of time with the board. We've presented it a couple times to you um, in executive sessions or study sessions, whichever one. I don't know if there's any questions from the public. Uh, the big thing is training our kids that if they're in the back part of the school and something crazy is going on in the front part of the school, that they can get out. Training them where that safe place is to go so that then we can reunite them with their families um, safely instead of them having to live through some chaos. Uh, the counterpart, maybe the part that the public asks questions about, um, that involves training kids to maybe throw a textbook at somebody that comes through the door if they are in danger. Um, I know a lot of schools keep canned goods for elementary kids that they can use to throw. Um, we're not asking them to go attack somebody with a weapon, but if it's the only way to keep them safe and it's to save kids, then that is what we would ask them to do. But that would not be the first option. The first option is to get out and evacuate if you can. So, but we wanna have them trained so they don't just sit in the corner and wait for something traumatic to happen. Did I forget anything, Mrs. Vance? Yeah, and I think it's important uh, for the board and the community to realize that, that the grant funds are, um, are set aside for this so it would come out of a, out of a safety grant. That if you feel it's very important that, and we're thankful that the community wants to get involved, they would help pay for some of those slots, which would recoup some of the grant money, and then that could be reallocated to different areas within school safety. But I also think it's important with those school safety meetings that we're all talking a common language as well, and it gets, gets those officers, get those community representatives into our buildings working together on, on this initiative, and then we would be trained the trainers, so we would have those trainers in our building that could continue to perpetuate that without additional cost. I also want to mention this is now backed by the Department of Education. This is something the state, we're kind of ahead of the game in that, which will be a positive for Rochester Community Schools as well, but this is something that they are picking up on and will begin to promote throughout their school safety specialist training. So it's a great thing for us to get going. Questions? So it may be a case where you need to break a window to flee, uh, different scenarios. Uh, yeah. You just don't want to be a city duck, basically. For right. sure, and that's what we train now. I mean, because we practice a lockdown once a semester, um, but this will be something that we then can practice and begin to implement at the beginning of next school year. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. I appreciate that. Anybody else have any questions? I don't. I, I think it, I'm also excited about that, the idea of having them sit in a corner and, and hope that everything goes okay is a scary one, so I appreciate you finding another alternative. And we hope that we never have to use any of the training. Absolutely. Ever. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. amen to that. Thank you. It's better to be prepared, though. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Oscar. Uh -huh. I think we need a, a motion to approve the Alice Train the Trainer model. <clears throat> so moved. Okay, where's okay. my bread? And second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Randy? Mr. Carey, Pfizer? Okay. Okay, personal report. Designations. <coughs> At Camp Riddle Cafe Manager, Nathan Davison, Riddle Special Needs Instructional Assistant, Randy Wynn, Varsity Girls Assistant Coach, Bethany Sewell, Junior Varsity Girls Basketball Coach, Ryan Emmert, Riddle Principal, Ryan Hill, Athletic Director. Hirings. Felina Jackson, Temporary Third Grade Teacher for the remaining maternity leave of Megan McLaughlin, 
starting April 4th until the end of the 2015-2016 school year. Kathy Rausch, temporary fifth grade teacher for the extended absence of Paul Helstern, starting April 4th until the end of the 2015-16 school year. Joel Davison, instructional assistant, special needs assistant, Riddle. Elizabeth Davison, daycare program assistant in the afternoon. Jessica Device, daycare program assistant in the morning. Michelle Walters, daycare program assistant in the afternoon. Termination, Laura Calvert, daycare program. Let's, uh, let's, let's, okay, let's move on to the summer school. We have Tony, Tony Stasiak, government. English, Hope Shally. Health, Katie Felke. PE, Brian Hooker, Mike Clare, halftime. Charlie Schwank, halftime. Unpaid internship, Samantha Briggs. Uh, we could have a motion to approve those at this time. So moved. Okay, motion by Sandy. I second that. And yeah, second by Steve. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Right. Okay, motion carried by zero. Uh, we have a reassignment. Uh, Jason Snyder, Columbia Principal. As, as the board knows, Jason's contract reads at this point in time that as of June 30th, he would conclude that temporary administrative contract. Um, Jason, there has been, uh, I cannot tell you the amount of emails and phone calls and positive support I, I have gotten in regards to the job you're doing and, and teachers just requesting consistency and you're doing a phenomenal job and they have just reached out to me and I'm very comfortable um, recommending to the board that Jason be moved to a standard administrative contract, which would be a two-year contract beginning with the 2016-2017 school year and moving forward with with the standard two-year contract then okay any questions kate uh, i need a motion to approve the reassignment of jason so mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'll second yeah. <laughs> okay motion by brad and second by lisa all in favor okay most carried by you thank you jason you've really stepped up and done a tremendous job so i appreciate it as well thank you jason i want to thank you guys and i want to thank i mean i've, I've said this to mrs vance on several occasions when you're surrounded by great people it, it's uh it's, it's very it's very easy to um you know to, to fill in and, and to fill in for those uh, that aren't there and and to you know make a difference i i'm blessed that I've got a very supportive and patient staff. It's really been, you know, helpful, um, and I, I can't can't take all the credit because uh, they, uh, you know, they, they're they're what makes it happen every day. And uh, I, I'm honored and really look forward to the future of Columbia. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. <clears throat> if I may, then I'd like to consider for the board to consider an additional reassignment. With Jason's position now, that project lead the way position would be opened, and I would make a recommendation that Ryan Helt be reassigned to the project lead the way position at Columbia. I have had conversations with Jason in regards to that, and I believe that he also feels like that would be a good move for Columbia for a lot of different reasons, and would like to make that recommendation to the board this evening. Okay. Entertain a motion to reassign Ryan Hill to Project Lead the Way. Are we all going to approve the motion here at once? <laughs> in, in unison? Yeah. So okay. moved. So moved. Yes. That motion is second by Steve. All in favor? Right. Okay, motion carried by zero. Personally, I think it's a, a wonderful positive thing for there to be two names. Can you talk to them a little bit about that as well? Absolutely, those, those kiddos will have two great male influences for them, which is a good thing. Okay. Superintendent business. 
And just wanting to share, I appreciate everybody's patience. This is our first evening going through uh, board docs completely, and I want to thank Julie and Scott for, for helping make that happen. And just so the public is aware, it is on our school website. You can go to the page or the uh, drop down marked board docs. Is that what it's under? And then if you go under, under the meeting section, it will show um, those meetings that we have had, as well as agendas of meetings coming forward. And then the really nice thing about this, I think that Julie and I both feel, is that as this is taking place, we can update those notes, and so the public will have direct access to all of the decisions and everything that's made here in those uh, continued meetings. So we welcome you to, to access that. If you have questions, make sure you get a hold of myself or Scott Kistler or Julie could help with that. She's uh, becoming a super user as well, and uh, we'll laugh about that behind closed doors. Um, Additionally, at the next meeting, the board can anticipate the secondary uh, handbooks, which are currently online. We'll have those changes. We're also working as an administrative team with, with the hopes of bringing the math textbook adoption to you, which then will help us uh, get those uh, textbook rental fees um, both to yourself and to our parents so that they can begin planning. Um, those uh, costs for this fall. So our desire is to have that to you within the next month at those board meetings. Also working with Oscar around a board uh, walkthrough um, in combination with, with our next study session meetings and, and how that might look. So he and I started conversations today and we'll continue to build that for you and get that information out to you yet this week. Other than that, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, consent items number five and number six. Did we officially approve those um, for approval of claims and materials? Just when they approve the consent agenda, that okay, then that approves all the items. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. I think we had that always put in there. I, I just wanted to publicly thank Mr. Kistler, Mr. Funk, Mr. McCarthy, and uh, Scobie, Wendy Scobie. First off, because I'm blessed to be the district testing coordinator, but really <laughs> Kistler and Funk do a majority of that because it's all online, so I appreciate that. The last Saturday, thank goodness it snowed last Saturday, or two Saturdays ago, and it wasn't beautiful like this past weekend. We did e-learning. I feel it was a huge success, and that's all based on Mr. Kistler's um, group. I do ride him sometimes from the middle school when things aren't working, and so but I do want to publicly thank him and his crew. I don't know if we should give them a round of applause or not, but they do a lot of the work that, when it's working, nobody knows, but when it's not working, we're real quick to call and say, what's going on? So I appreciate it, Mr. Kistler and your guys. Thank you, Oscar. Got a good group to work with. Thank but Oscar, you. you didn't thank me for being the testing coordinator. I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and you brought up a really good point. We do have a good crew. I heard a lot of good things about our first e-learning day, and it was a first, and so there's a lot of things to learn and, and bugs to work out, but I think it went pretty smooth for the first time. Absolutely. Well, people have to remember it is an alternative. I mean, we could go in June when it's almost likely to be 78 and sunny. Yeah. And it's just another tool to help us keep the kids in school and not go extended days or into summer anymore than we have to. Absolutely. And there's work to be done, but... For the first launch of this. I think there were there were some kinks. I had some, some people who were concerned, but I said, well, this is the first one, so if you have if you have concerns, then voice those concerns. You can fix it if you don't know it. That's true. Another good byproduct of that was that we asked every teacher in the school corporation to come up with a five-hour online lesson plan for their students. And for some of our teachers, a five-hour online lesson plan, really easy to do. But if you ask every single teacher to step up to that, then everybody has done online learning now. <clears throat> and I think they have a feeling like, hey, we were successful. We, we pulled this off. Let's look at some other options for doing that and extending upon that. So it was a good thing from that standpoint as well. So we got a lot of new ideas and opportunities to improve. And make things run smoother. Sounds good. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the audience? If not, we'll uh, adjourn the meeting. Thank you for coming. Good meeting. <laughs> <laughs>